What is going on guys, Vlad here with SolusPLC.com and we are continuing our journey into the exploration of different instructions which Ladder Logic in PLC programming has to offer and we are working in RS Studio 5000 and we are at the compare section so if you look at the top uh, menu right here you will see all of the instructions available to you and in today's video we're going to be exploring the equal as well as the non-equal instruction so it's very s straightforward once you see it but it does deserve an example so let's dive right into it so in the first rung we have an equal situation which is comparing two different dense or integers within our PLC and as logic tells us zero is definitely equal to zero therefore this bit at the very end is energized through an OTE instruction which you have seen in a previous video so of course what I can do here while I'm online with the PLC I can change this live so if I set this to a 485 of course 485 is not equals to zero therefore this bit has been de-energized you can also use this instruction with constants so here you see that my source B is essentially this 56 and in order for me so I cannot change this on the live program what I need to do is double click the rung and make the edit here and then I can of course validate the rung or I can just recompile the entire program knowing that there's no other issues and that will change that source so this works very similarly to many other instructions where you use a constant but of course this integer can be changed and if it is equal to whatever the constant is set to then the um, the other instructions following the equals are going to be energized as well so do note that I don't have an example with a float but floats work just as well within the equals instruction uh, and here I have just two constants uh, I'm not exactly sure why you would do this but uh, essentially uh, in RS Studio 5000, you can do this. I believe RS Logics 500 will give you an error if you try to just compare two uh, constants because obviously this will always be false and there's no need to create this instruction as this rung will never execute. However, this system Boolean 2, as you would expect, would never energize. Here I have a different example on my rung 3. I have a perpetually running timer. We've seen this uh, in a couple of examples before, but essentially this system timer 0 is going to repeat its count going up to 1000 milliseconds and reset every single time because this not done bit essentially sets it back to zero whenever it reaches that 1000 since it is done it de-energizes resets the timer and then uh, resets all over again that being said the equals instruction is used on the next rung and in this case we are looking at the accumulated value of the timer and whenever the uh, timer value is equal to this arbitrarily picked constant 56 then this counter which we've also seen in the previous video is being incremented so every single time imagine that this timer is going 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. Uh, whenever it hits this 56, this counter will increment by 1 and you can see it uh, almost like clockwork, it's incrementing every single second. Uh, however, I do warn you about this particular application because depending on your scan time, you may not catch this. So this is 56, which is a precise millisecond value, uh, which needs to be uh, compared right at that point in order to increment this counter however if your PLC scan time becomes slow due to uh, you know a large program or just different scheduling you may not catch it so I would definitely not use an equals instruction in uh, plant production code for this particular application that being said it is surprisingly working fairly well and you do see this count up every single second uh, the next part of the tutorial, like I've mentioned, is going to be the non-equal instruction. I want to combine the two just to make a little bit of a longer video. Um, so looking at this non-equals instruction, it works exactly the opposite way as, uh, as opposed to the equals instruction. However, it gets uh, a little bit tricky, I guess, in your head. Sometimes you can't always uh, picture the way things are going to be. So in this case, zero is and zero are definitely equal. So they are essentially... Uh, so it is essentially false um, and that's how I still see it in my head if you set you know some kind of a different value then 4,563 is definitely not equal to 25 therefore it is set to true uh, similarly you can use both integers floats in combination with uh, different constants so just like we've done before and you can also actually reverse this order uh, I believe in RS Logix 500 once again there's a little bit of a limitation when it comes to that but here we can definitely you know system 
int and then we can set this to be uh, whatever value we want and there is no essentially limitation where you put this constant uh, the way it is in RS Logix 500 and of course these values are not equal therefore the boolean is energized and if I set them to the same values it's going to be de-energized and like I've mentioned before you can definitely use constants and last but not least we have exactly the same example however here uh, what's really interesting is that uh, the timer is looking for a transition. So do remember that this uh, not equal instruction will essentially be true whenever these values are not equal. Therefore, it is going to be on for most of the cycle and only off of that 56 uh, 56th millisecond of our timer since the timer is counting exactly the same way as the previous one therefore there is a transition to low and then back to high which is where this counter picks up and essentially it's picking up at 50 second 57th millisecond every single time that uh, this timer cycles through because you do see that transition from a low to a high uh, condition on the non equals uh, instruction. That's pretty much all there is to it. So the equals and the non equals allows you to compare two different integers or floats as well as constants in order to uh, produce an outcome for your rung. So extremely useful when you're, you know, you're counting something, you're using timers, you're using uh, any count, any sort of proxies that will uh, validate the number of, uh, you know, cycles you've done. So just very, very useful instructions. And let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Thank you guys so much for watching my content. If you have any questions on this topic, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. And if you can spend five seconds of your time liking as well as sharing that video, if you've enjoyed it, that would mean absolutely the world to me. And if you have any suggestions for the channel, what kind of hardware software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that down there as well. See you next time. Take care. Bye.